If your 3D prints won't stick to the bed or they start lifting, warping, or falling off before your prints finish, this video is for you. Build plate adhesion is one of the biggest beginner frustrations and the good news is it's normally a pretty easy fix. Today I'm going to break down why adhesion matters, some different types of build plates, and how to figure out what's going wrong without overcomplicating it. If you're brand new to 3D printing or still struggling with your first layers, this video is the start of a beginner basic series where I explain things to you the way that I wish they had been explained to me when I started. Welcome back to Design and Forge Studios Print to Profit. My name is Ashley. Let's get into it. Build plate adhesion is simply how well your print is going to stick to your build plate while it's printing. If your print doesn't stick properly, nothing else matters. Not your printer, not your filament, not your settings, and not your slicer. So how do you know if you have poor build plate adhesion? Well, your prints will slide around the plate instead of sticking to it. You'll have the corners of your prints, if it's a flat one, start to lift up. Your print can just pop right off entirely mid print. And another thing is when your first layer looks messy or uneven. But here's the important part. Adhesion problems are almost always never random. So let's first talk about the different types of build plates. If you are a bamboo owner or for instance, flash forge owner, when you get your printer, you're going to have on it one of these gold plates. This is a textured PEI plate and it is a standard plate for those machines. I can't speak to what comes with the other printers because I've never used them. I have used both Bamboo and Flash Forge though. These plates are great in the beginning, but in my opinion, I don't think that they're great for long-term use. You might have a different experience, but for me, I don't think that they have fantastic adhesion long-term. The number one thing with all the plates though, no matter which kind you have, it has to be clean, but we will come back to that. Textured PEI plate is really standard. This is what's gonna come with your printer. Other options after that, and one that I see a lot of people use, are the Bicu Cryogrip plates. This was the first kind of plate that I went to after the PEI textured plate, and I will come back with more on that in a minute. Another different, more artistic type of plate are these holographic plates. I've talked about them in a previous video. They are really fun. They do put what is on the plate onto the back or front if you print face down of whatever your print is, but you have to keep them super, super clean. Any print on the surface will show up on your print in the end. There are glass build plates out there, but I've never worked with them. I don't know about the long-term use of them and how well they hold up. I don't think many people tend to use them anymore. It's not something I would certainly recommend for a beginner at all. But my personal favorite build plate are these Bicu Cryo Grip plates. I will link them in the comments if you want to look at the details of it. They are available for most of the printers out there. And this is the one that I have had the best experience with adhesion with. Each type of plate has its own cleaning requirements. Some of them, like the holographic plate and the textured PEI plate, you can just clean by spraying alcohol on it and wiping it with a lint-free cloth. The other one, like the gray cryo grit plate, can only be washed with hot water and soap. So make sure that you know how your plate needs to be maintained before you clean it. Because if you clean that plate with alcohol, you will actually ruin the adhesion on it over time. And a lot of times people don't realize that it's something just as small as oil on your fingers getting onto the plate that can ruin the adhesion of your prints. So make sure that when you're removing your prints, you're not touching your print bed at all. You will never get good adhesion if you have a dirty print bed. So that brings us to why our prints don't actually adhere to our build plates. The number one reason, and maybe the most obvious, is that you have a dirty build plate. So the first thing that's going to cause this is actually oil from your fingers. So when you're trying to remove your prints off of the print bed and you touch it, any little amount of oil that gets onto your plate can actually hinder the adhesion of your next print. Make sure that you have something that you're going to use to get that print off your plate 
if you don't want to wash it before you start your next print. The second one that tends to have a lot of problems for people is dust. If you live in a dusty place, if you don't tend to use your printers a lot and then you come back and want to use it, make sure that you're giving that plate a good clean before you do so because any dust on top of that plate is going to stop the filament from being able to adhere to it. Another problem when it comes to adhesion is that the first layer that is going down of your filament is too high. This will have to do with your Z offset and we can talk about that in a future video or you can just jump to Google right now if you think that that is a problem of yours. And one that I think probably happens for people more often than they realize is that they have the wrong bed temperature for their filament type. So when you order your filament, look on even the roll itself and it will show you what the recommended temperature is to print at. If you think you're having adhesion problems or like me, I have my printers in the basement of my house. It tends to be a little bit cooler down here. So I actually up my bed temperature five degrees Celsius compared to what the recommended temperature level is. And for something like those holographic plates, they're a smooth plate. You need to go higher temperature with those to make sure that your prints are going to stick. You can also have the wrong plate for your filament. Some filament, like PETG for example, can't be printed on all of the plates. So make sure that you know ahead of time that your specific filament can be printed on that plate. The vast majority of people print in PLA. PLA can be printed on all the plates that I just mentioned, but just be sure that you know if the filament that you're using will work on that specific plate. And if you are brand new to 3D printing, don't expect perfection the first try. Yes, a lot of these printers are plug and play and you can download files and just go. But sometimes you need to figure out specifics for your filament. You need to know what the nozzle temperature, what the bed temperature should be. And you also need to know if it's the type of filament that needs an enclosed machine. And we will talk about that in the next video in this series. But what I want to stress is that it's rarely the printer's fault and it's just a learning curve. Something that you have to figure out while you're on your 3D printing journey. So what are some immediate beginner fixes that you can try? Well, number one, clean your plate. Clean your plate, clean your plate, clean your plate. There are so many pictures of people saying, I don't know why my print won't work. And you look at their plate and it's disgusting. So number one is clean your plate. Know whether it's isopropyl alcohol that you can use or if you have to use soap and water. And if it is a plate that you can just clean with alcohol, it doesn't hurt that right before every single print, give it a quick wipe. Then you're gonna know that that plate is clean. Number two, as previously mentioned, avoid touching the surface. At all costs, avoid touching the surface of your build plate. The third one is to know about your Z offset. And again, I said we will speak about that in a future video because it's too much to go into in this video. And like I mentioned that I do in my printing studio because of the temperature of my basement, I raise my bed temperature by five degrees Celsius. So consider that as an easy first step to see if that will help to improve your print. And two final options that you can do is one, you can slow down the speed of that first layer that is in your slicer settings. Or number two, you can always add a brim. Now I don't recommend adding a brim if you're doing something articulating like a really long snake. It can actually mess up the way that it articulates, but for sure it's a huge pain to get that brim off of all the different parts. But if it's something that doesn't need to articulate and you're still having issues with it, try adding a brim to your print, which will just give it a little bit more surface layer touching the plate, and hopefully you can then get through your print. These small adjustments can solve almost any problem that you're going to have with adhesion without having to buy anything new. When is it not an adhesion issue? So you could have a problem with bed leveling. The great thing is if you own a bamboo machine or almost any of the newer machines, they will self level. Go through your maintenance and make your machine calibrate. This is something that you should be doing every now and then. And I do have a maintenance video coming up in this series as well. So keep your eye out for that. Another one that's not an adhesion issue could just be problems with your filament. If you have a lot of moisture in your home or where you're printing, your filament can absorb that moisture, especially if it's something like PETG. And if you have a lot of moisture inside your filament, 
you actually won't get good bed adhesion. So make sure that you're eliminating things like that by getting yourself a dryer that you can put your filament in to pull that moisture out. And finally, something else that isn't an adhesion problem is just draft or temperature problems. So again, I fixed the temperature problem of my basement being a little bit cooler by increasing my bed temperature, but you wanna make sure that you don't have your printers running, say, beside an open window or a fan that's constantly going, an air conditioner. You wanna eliminate all of these different variables that can change so that your printers can do the job that they are built to do. If build plate adhesion has been frustrating for you, please let me know down below in the comments. I do read every single comment. I try to respond to every single one. So I am happy to help in any area that I can. And if you're brand new to 3D printing, make sure that you hit the like button and subscribe so that you can be alerted when I put out the next video in this beginner series. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy printing.